We've talked about the relativity of time. Now we're going to talk about the relativity of space. And we're going to use example two that we just finished to um, elucidate this issue. So example two, this trip to that nearby star. The trip to Alpha Centauri takes four and a half years according to a clock on Earth. And that observer, the Earth-bound observer, sees the distance as 4.3 light years, the distance to the star. All right, fair enough. The trip to Alpha Centauri takes 1.4 years according to a clock on the rocket. And that clock measures the proper time and sees the distance as 0.95c, they both agree on the speed, times 1.4 years, measured on that clock, equals 1.3 light years. So that astronaut sees the distance as less than the distance seen by the Earth-bound observer. Who's right? Neither one. They're both right. But the important thing is that that astronaut sees a distance that's contracted. It's shorter than the, than the distance observed by the Earth-bound observer. Both observers agree that the relative speed of the rocket with respect to the Earth is 0.95c. What's the actual distance between the Earth and Alpha Centauri? The answer is it's relative. <laughs> What do you mean by it's relative? It means that it depends on your point of view. Different observers see a different uh, answer, and both of them are right. So let's define the proper length. This is a, a subtle difference. It's not defined the same as proper time. The proper length, so which one's right? <laughs> which one of these lengths is correct? Well, neither one. But there is such thing as a proper length, and it's defined as the distance between two points measured by an observer who is at rest with respect to the two points. Okay, so we're not talking about the events occurring in the same place like we did with proper time, but now we're saying which observer is at rest with respect to the two points? Well, here's Earth. Here's the star. Then um, here's the astronaut's point of view, or his reference frame. So he's, he's in this rocket. He's moving with speed v. We're trying to find the distance between Earth and this star. We want to know what that distance is. The proper length is measured by an observer who's at rest with, the two, with respect to the two points. Well, is the astronaut? at rest with respect to the two points? No. He's moving relative to the Earth, and he's moving also toward the star. So he doesn't qualify. What about that Earth-bound observer? Is he at rest with respect to the two points we're trying to find the distance for? Yes. He's sitting on the Earth, so he's at rest with respect to the Earth. That star is a distance 4.3 light years away. He's at rest with respect to both places. So in this case, the proper length is measured by the Earth-bound observer because he is at rest with respect to the two endpoints. So uh, that same factor, that 1 minus v squared over c squared, that cropped up with the proper time also crops up with the proper length, except now, instead of dividing by this ugly square root, we're going to multiply by it. So that you take the proper length, whatever that is, and then you multiply that by the contracted length. And, oh, I'm sorry. You multiply that by 1 minus v squared over c squared, and that gives the contracted length. It'll give a number that's less. So the proper length in this particular, for example, 2, the proper length is uh, 4.3 light years. 
the contracted length is this 1.3 light years for this particular example. V and C are still the same thing. And the contracted length is always shorter than the proper length. What's true about the um, dilated time compared with the, um, the proper time? The dilated time is always longer. Well, that's why they call this contracted. <laughs> contracted means shorter. So um, whatever the proper length is, a 4.3 light years, for example, anybody else is going to measure a contracted length, something that's less, if they um, are not in the proper frame of reference. Contraction of the spacecraft. An astronaut using a meter stick as it rests relative to a cylindrical spacecraft measures the length and diameter to be 82 meters and 21 meters respectively. Spacecraft moves with a constant speed of 0.95 c relative to the Earth. What are the dimensions of the spacecraft as measured by an observer on the Earth? All right, so first of all, the astronaut. Here's our astronaut. He takes out his tape measure and he measures um, the length of the spacecraft to be 82 meters. Is that the proper length? Okay, so what's proper length? The proper length is measured by an observer that for which the two points uh, who is at rest with respect to the two points. Is that astronaut with res at rest with respect to these two points? Yeah, he sure is. He's moving along. At, from his point of view, these two points are stationary. They're on the same rocket that he's traveling with. Perfect. So that is the proper length. So what, um, what about the contracted length seen by this other observer? It will be, we just actually plug in. The proper length, uh, I'm sorry, this is L naught, not delta L naught, is 1 minus B squared over C squared. That's the 82 meters, 0.95 C over C. So the, um, the earthbound observer sees a spacecraft that's only 26 meters long. And it's kind of embarrassing because how's everybody going to fit on there? Is everything squashed? Are their bodies all squashed? Well, no. The astronaut over here says, fine, I'm doing fine. Everything's great. This spacecraft's 82 meters long. Um, but from the perspective of the Earth-bound observer, he sees a squashed uh, spacecraft. The diameter remains the same. So the only thing that length contraction does is it contracts the length in the direction of travel. If you're traveling this way, it's going to contract, uh, contract those lengths in that particular direction. So that is, the diameter doesn't change. Now, the interesting thing, from the perspective of the astronaut, the Earth gets squashed. Because from his perspective, he says, hey, I'm stationary. Earth's moving the other direction. Therefore, the Earth is getting squashed in the direction of motion. And um, also, the star up ahead gets squashed side uh, front to back. 